Now, not only can the bark filter respond to control voltages, it can also generate control voltages. The brightness of each LED corresponds to how much sound energy is in each of those frequency bands, and therefore how much voltage is being generated on output. Now, the really cool thing is that you can put those control voltages to work. There's individual voltage out for each one of these. So you can use these as, say, triggers for drum sounds, and we'll explore that in the next movie. Or you can use them internally, have the voltages generated by the verbose control other parts of the verbose. In this case, it splits itself into two personalities, the odd bands and the even bands. One set of bands can modulate the other. And to do that, I'm going to bring in some drum loops. I have some loops stored, and my expert sleeper is disting. I'll bring that into a spare input here and give a quick audition of them. What we want to do is use that to modulate our synth sound. Now, we haven't talked much about the inputs on the Verobo Spark Filter, but there are two of them. Odds in and evens in. They're normaled to each other, so it acts as a very simple two-to-one mixer, if you like. However, you can also use them separately. I'll grab another channel of the drum loops, bring that into the even ones. And now you can hear the drum sounds come out of just the right channel, the even bands. The synthesizer is still coming out of the odd bands, which is the left channel. What we're going to do is make one half modulate the other half. And to do that, we just need to flick a switch, for example, even to odd. I'm going to dial out this added voltage from my XY controller so the only voltages are being generated internally and play a note. To get a wider range of sounds, I might go ahead and dial down my modulating oscillator an octave. Drone the synth here and raise the cutoff. There we go. Get some high frequencies in there as well. This is a trick I use all the time to go ahead and add some rhythmic bounce to my synthesizer sounds to tie in with my drum loops. Go ahead and add a little bit of the drum loops back in. Maybe center up the pan. And we try with different drum loops. Try a lower note. That's a nice low evil sound there. Now in addition to using percussion sounds, we'll pull the drums out for a moment, we can go ahead and use other signals such as ordinary voice, your typical vocoder application. However, this is not all that great of a vocoder for voice. That's because we're using half the bands for analysis and the other half to impress a harmonic structure on our synth sound going through it. That's not enough bands for a lot of intelligibility. Plus, dedicated vocoders have other tricks in them, such as filters that allow noise bursts to get through for more intelligibility on plosives and S's and things like that. But let's give it a shot anyway. I have my microphone currently run into an external audio interface module, the Chaos Devices Swastopol in my case. I'm going to go ahead and take its amplified version of my send. I've had it bring the level from my mixer up to modular level. We'll go ahead and plug that into the right side with even harmonics. And now, as you see, as I talk, these LEDs jump, indicating that they're getting some energy, showing the energy in different frequency bands being generated by my voice. Let's go ahead and bring the droning synth back up again. And now as I talk, you get some synth sound. Well, that's kind of a fun sci-fi heavy sound, but it's not really high on intelligibility, is it? We can try a few tricks, like playing higher notes. There's a little bit of higher pitch, higher pitch again higher pitch again, maybe take the modulating oscillator up an octave to 
a little sweeter of a sound out of it. That's that typical feminine vocoder sound you're used to hear on old songs. But it still doesn't have a lot of intelligibility. I'll even take my voice out of it and go to straight vocoder sound. That's the problem with six bands. You don't have enough intelligibility. We can try some tricks to mix some of my original voice back in. Let's see, I'm on the even bands, so let's go ahead and bring some of my voice into the mix here. Now we get a little more intelligibility. I'm pan at center here. I still prefer it for these wonderful tricks like percussive sounds or even ambiences driving through this. There's the drum sound, down low. Nice low evil sound there. In addition to drum loops, I have some other sound effects loaded. Like a little bit of Morse code. Crowd noises. But in general, I find the vocoder applications for the bark filter to be much better when using rhythmic applications.